I, I get I get the message, but I didn't understand why you call it know your price and not know your value. Yeah, you know, because, well, my favorite play in the whole wide world is Two Trains Running by August Wilson. And in the play, the main character, Memphis, is about to have his property seized through eminent domain. The city of Pittsburgh says, I'm going to give you $15,000. Um, and the main character, Memphis, and I'm paraphrasing here, he says, I know I got my price. It's not $15,000. I got my price. I know my price. And it's a refrain throughout the play. There's another character, Hambone, who paints a fence for a ham. He paints the fence, never gets his ham. Give me my ham, give me my ham, until he goes crazy and dies, actually. But there's actually a, a happy ending to the story. The main character gets $35,000. And the, the moral of the story is, is, is somewhat what you're saying. Know that you have of worth, of value. But also, you got to know the price to stand on, mm. even if it means going crazy and dying. And so that's where it comes from. The, you know, some of the racism that, and, and I, throughout the book, I say there's nothing wrong with black people that ending, uh, that ending racism can't solve. That, 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 that's one of my favorite lines. That line right there, you got to say it again. Say it, say it so everybody, yeah. so that's a great line. I wish I had thought of it. The only thing I don't like about that line is that I didn't write it. <laughs> Well, there, there's nothing wrong with black people that ending racism can't solve. And, and, it, and it gets to this point that we're constantly working within this line that the state of black cities, uh, the state of black neighborhoods are a direct result of the moral failings, the bad choices of people. But in, in, when in fact, it comes from the devaluation of our assets, mm. which comes out of the wash in the research that I put out in the book. You know, you know, let's go into that because I, I want to get to the core of the message. The core of the message of this book is saying what to us. And, and let, let, let's be clear, your, your, your book has a, has a message and a core that is fundamental. Not the least of which is not just reimagining personal value, but you push us to reimagine what it's like to understand the value of the places we sleep. Yeah, like so I did this study where I look at housing prices in black neighborhoods where the share of the black population is greater than 50 percent. And I compare those to places where the share of the black population is less than a percent. And I control for all those things, all those things people say are the reasons why housing prices are lower in black communities. Um, I controlled for crime. I controlled for um, education, um, walkability and all those fancy Zillow metrics you see. And what I found astounds that a home in a black neighborhood is priced the same exact home an apples to apples comparison, same exact home is priced 23% lower, about 48,000 less than accumulatively in black neighborhoods, $156 billion is lost to racism because of the perception. 156 billion could have funded um, eight, more than 8 million college degrees Four million um, uh, could have started up four million businesses based on the average amount that, of, that a black person starts up a business. It could have replaced the pipes in Flint, Michigan, three thousand times over. It mm -hmm. is more than double the opioid crisis. Um, what it costs? It's a large number, and yet we keep saying if, if black folk just get to themselves together. No, we don't need to get ourselves together any more than anyone else. We need to be clear about that now, because, right. you know, there, there's trifling people in every community. We, every see, that community. Every, we see that in the highest office of the land uh, to, to, to <laughs> wherever. Literally, literally, we see that in the highest office of the land. The black people do not have monopoly on being anything. We are as human, as fallible, as rich, as complex, as genius, as bona fide as anybody else. I love that. And I love the notion of really compelling people to reimagine and to, and, and, to, and to not take the white gaze and turn it against ourselves. Yeah, you know, and this is the thing. We, we, we so much believe in whiteness is good. And no, it is not. I mean, our assets are powerful, but yet they are devalued. 
in education, our degrees are worth more than what they are in, in healthcare, um, in uh, voting, our votes matter. You know, we were constantly saying, oh, no, we don't vote, we don't do this one. But guess who bails out Democrats on every time? <laughs> we just did it, right? We just we did it. It saved Joe Biden's life. Saved his life. And you're telling me that our, our votes don't matter. See, and, but this is the, I mean, our fascination with comparing ourselves to these idols that, mm -hmm. that, that make no sense for us. Make no sense. <laughs> I mean, and, and so for- Bowing down to gods you have to carry. Exactly, exactly. I mean, shoot, we're going to church. But, the, <laughs> <laughs> but that's what this book is about. It's to say, hey, uh, we have assets. We have strength. All they need is investment. 